Hey, Michael Gale again here, another little video. Uh, I want to introduce my uh, new blog. I created a blog. It's endtimebibleprophecy.com. So uh, check it out, endtimebibleprophecy.com. And I have articles on there and links to my videos. And uh, I'm updating with more posts on a regular basis as I write them. And I'll do updated posts. And so uh, a lot of people would rather read than uh, watch a video. And uh, so uh, that's why I made this blog. And so check it out. And then on my YouTube channel, uh, the easiest way to find my channel is ampersand MF Gale. And go to YouTube and then type in ampersand uh, M as in Mike, F as in Fred, G-A-L-E. And that'll take you to my channel and all my videos there. And then subscribe if you like my stuff, then uh, subscribe. If you don't like my stuff, then don't subscribe. So today's topic is the three woes from the book of Revelation. And I'm not going to go into detail on all the stuff that's in those three woes. It's just an overview. Uh, I have, again, go to my blog to get more details on all of these things. And so uh, during Daniel's 70th week, there's something called the three woes. And during the three woes, uh, the three woes are the last three angels of the seventh seal. So the seventh seal is, is Daniel's 70th week. I have an article on that on my blog. The seventh seal is, it does last seven years, and it's Daniel's 70th week. It's the 70th week. It's the seventh seal. It's seven years. Okay? So when the seventh seal is broken by Jesus, there's silence in heaven for about a half an hour. So this signals the beginning of Daniel's 70th week. This is the biggie. This is the one that uh, Daniel talked about. This is all the prophecies are all rolled up into Daniel's 70th week here. Uh, and so there's seven angels and each one has a trumpet. So the seventh seal is seven angels and seven trumpets. Seven, seven, sevens. Okay, and uh, so this is in Revelation chapter 8. And the first four angels uh, are the, blow their trumpets, and then the last three angels are the three woes. So let's, let's look at the, the first four guys. Uh, the first sounded, and a third of the earth was burned up. The second angel sounded his trumpet, and a third of the sea became blood. The third angel sounded, and the rivers were made bitter with wormwood. Uh, that's gross. And then the fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun and the moon and the stars were darkened. So those are the first four trumpets. And those take place in the first half of Daniel's 70th week. And, and then the, now the last three are the three woes. And so they're introduced in Rev 8.13. Then I looked, and I heard an eagle flying in mid-heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to those who dwell on the earth because of the remaining blast of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. So we know that the three woes are the three remaining angels and their trumpet blasts. It, it says it right here, plain as day. So there's a, before I start the three woes, there's this misconception out there. And, and the whole Bible prophecy world has this concept, this perception that the end times torment the good guys. And and of course, the good guys go through some stuff, but th this isn't the biblical perspective. When you read the book of Revelation and you look at these things, it, for the most part, it's the good guys beating up on the bad guys, not the other way around. But we have this perception, we've been spoon-fed this from the beginning uh, for all these years, that, oh, it's terrible, the good guys are beat up on all the way through the tribulation. No, I'll tell you who gets beat up on during the, during the seventh week, the great tribulation. It's the bad guys get beat up on, not the good guys. So uh, that's, and I and we we came up with that. I don't know who came up with that. It's just the uh, the fear mongering for the pre-tribbers, I guess, is where all that came from. But it's not biblical, and uh, it's actually just the opposite. The overcomer company, the worshippers, uh, torment the bad guys, and and it says that. So the three woes specifically torment the ungodly people. They're, they're not directed toward the godly people. They're directed toward the ungodly people. And when we read about them, you, you can see this plain as day. And so, uh, especially uh, with the two witnesses, chapter 11, it says uh, 
they tormented those who dwell on the earth for three and a half years. And, and those are the good guys tormenting the bad guys. So, and then when they're killed at the end of the uh, tribulation there, when the two witness company of overcomers are killed, the worshipers are killed, um, the whole world celebrates because these guys were beating them up for so long. So we have to drop this concept because the fact is, during the last days, God has a mighty army on the earth. And that mighty army is the ones you want to be afraid of, not the bad guys. And, and you want to definitely be in that army. I definitely want to be in that army in the last days. So uh, let's get into this. Uh, the fifth trumpet is the first woe. And so let's look at that. The fifth angel sounded and a star from heaven had fallen to the earth and the key to the bottomless pit was given to him. And he opens the pit and out come something like locusts and they torment all those who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. So who get, who's getting tormented? The ungodly people, not the godly people. And, and this lasts for five months. And it's so bad that men will seek death and not find it. I mean, uh, you, you don't want to be one of the ungodly people on the receiving end of these locusts, okay? So, uh, then in verse 12, we have the end of the first woe. So, so the fifth angel is the first woe. And uh, then in uh, Rev 9, 12, the first woe is past. Behold, two woes are still coming after these things. So there we have the three angels with the three trumpets, the last three angels of the seven, and those are the three woes. And now the first one's done. That was the five, five months uh, of locust stinging people. That's the end of the first woe. So let's get to the second woe. Okay, uh, the, the sixth angel sounded his trumpet, and the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates are released. The four angels kill a third of mankind. A third of mankind, three, three plus billion people are killed during this period of time. This is the 200 million horsemen. Fire, smoke, and brimstone come out of the mouths of the 200 million, and they kill a third of the ungodly people on the, on the earth. And, and once again, this woe is directed at the evil people. And let's look at Rev 920. It, it shows you this. The rest of mankind who were not killed by these 200 million horsemen, by these plagues, still did not repent of the works of their hands so as to worship demons and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their sexual immoralities, nor of their thefts. What? Is that the godly people? No, that's not. The, that's the ungodly people on the earth. And that's actually a description of the harlot's people. All those descriptions that, that's there in, in that section is, is talking about the harlots people because those are all the characteristics of the harlot of Babylon. Again, I have lots of detail on this on my blog. And so the second woe kills a third of the harlots people. You don't want to be with the harlot. So, uh, and then the, then the last verse of chapter 9, notice that it doesn't say that the second woe is over. This is very important to understanding the second woe. Uh, because now we're going to find out who the 200 million horsemen are. So then we continue to chapter 10 and Rev uh, 10, 7. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he is about to sound, then the mystery of God is finished, as he preached to his servants, the prophets. The, the seventh angel is the third woe, the last angel. Uh, it mentions him here and says in the days when he, he sounds his trumpet that the mystery of God is finished. But he's not sounding yet. We are not done with the sixth angel, the second woe yet. Uh, then at the end of the short chapter 10, John is told that he must prophesy again. Uh, in Rev 10, 11, he says to me, you must prophesy again concerning many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. This introduces who the 200 million horsemen are. We're still in the second woe. We're still in the sixth trumpet, the sixth angel and the sixth trumpet blast. Right? The seventh hasn't sounded yet. That's coming. So the second woe continues. Rev 11, 1. And we've all heard this verse a million times. Then there was given me a measuring rod like a staff, and someone said, get up and measure the temple of God and the altar and those who worship in it. 
Leave out the outer court that is outside the temple and do not measure it. It's been given to the nations and they will tread underfoot the holy city for three and a half years. And I will grant authority to my two witnesses and they will prophesy for three and a half years clothed in sackcloth. So, so verse three says, and I will grant authority. Who does he grant authority to? The worshipers. When, when the verse starts with and, it's a continuation of the previous verses. So as I've said a, a million times, there can be no discussion of the two witnesses until you deal with who is worshiping in the sanctuary and who is in the outer court. That sets the whole context of the two witnesses and what goes on. So the worshipers are granted authority, power and authority. So uh, they, they are measured, which means to protect and to anoint. The true worshipers all over the planet, this is global, all over the planet are protected for the three and a half years. And, and of course, this is the church in Philadelphia. It says, I will keep you from the hour of testing because you have kept the word of my perseverance, because you didn't compromise, because you did not deny me, even during the tough times, even when it costs you. Therefore, I will keep you from the hour of testing, that hour that is coming upon the whole earth. This is Philadelphia. They are granted power and authority for the three and a half years. They don't go away anywhere. The, the open door before them is the veil between the outer court and the sanctuary. They go through the veil into his presence and they're worshiping. Laodicea, on the other hand, not the case. So those in the outer court are not measured and they are disciplined and reproved for, by the ungodly for three and a half years. The three and a half years is the great tribulation. So uh, Laodicea, the backslidden church, the apostate church of the last days, the whole purpose of the tribulation is to discipline Laodicea and get the backslidden church back on track. God's not going to abandon Laodicea. He's going to discipline them and bring them back to him. Amen. So let's look at uh, Rev 11, 5. If anyone wants to harm them, this is the two witnesses overcomer company the 200 million horsemen, if anybody wants to harm them, fire flows out of their mouths and devours their enemies. So who's getting beat up on here? The people that come against the preaching of the word by the two witnesses. The two witness company of overcomers are testifying to the truth. And if anybody messes with them, they're toast. Don't mess with these dudes. They have been granted power and authority that has never been seen on the earth before. You don't want to mess with these dudes. Okay, so, uh, and, and what are they doing? They're testifying of the gospel of the kingdom to the whole earth for the whole three and a half years. This is like last call from the bar days, man. Uh, this is your last chance to get saved. These people are testifying to the truth. And, and this is the fulfillment of uh, what Jesus talked about in Matthew 24 when he said, uh, the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to the whole world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. So what is that? This is the two witness company of overcomers all over the planet, global, all the overcomers all over the, the whole planet, and they are testifying to the truth to all the nations as a testimony to them. What does it say about the two witnesses? They testify for three and a half years, and then the end will come. <clears throat> And if anyone comes against them, fire comes out of their mouth and consumes them. So remember, we're still in the sixth trumpet here, the second woe. It's the 200 million horsemen with fire coming out of their mouths. Well, the two witness company of worshipers has fire coming out of their mouths. The 200 million horsemen kill a third of mankind. And anybody that messes with the two witness company, uh, their fire comes out of their mouths and kills them. It's, these these things are one and the same. The 200 million are the two witnesses. And uh, that's, and, and, and if you don't believe me, read Joel chapter two. It's a beautiful picture of these guys. So I'm, I'm going to do a whole uh, section on Joel two, but uh, I just, I'm just going to read one verse right now. And then we got, we need to move on. Joel two eleven. the Lord utters his voice before his army. Surely his army is very great. For strong is he who carries out his word. The day of the Lord is indeed great and very awesome, and who can endure it? 
So God has an army in the last days on the earth, and it's great and mighty, and it's God's army. And, and uh, it's talking about the day of the Lord. What's the day of the Lord? The great tribulation. That's the day of the Lord. And who can endure it? And, and so we'll get into, we'll do a whole thing on Joel. But uh, the 200 million horsemen are the great army in the last days. And for some reason, the church, they, they, most of the whole church in time world says that the army and Joel are the bad guys. Why, what is this thing that God cannot have an army of good guys? What is this thing? And with all these teachers, these Bible prophecy teachers, it drives me crazy. Oh, it's, oh, the bad guys are tormenting the good guys. You, God can't have some good people. God can't have somebody testifying to the truth. God, God is some weak God that's just, just trampled. All of his people are just trampled on during the tribulation. What, what, where did this concept come from? It's, it's a false narrative. I tell you, you want to be scared in the last days? Be an ungodly person. Yeah, then, you, then you'll be scared. Who can endure it, it says. The day of the Lord is great and very awesome. Who can endure it? The, the good guys will endure it just fine. You, it's the bad guys that are getting beat up on. So make a point to join this army. Tell, tell the Lord right now, Lord, I pray that everybody watching this video will be in this army. Your army, Lord, in the last days. Your great and mighty army. All 200 million of them. That's a bunch. Thank you, Jesus. And so, uh, chapter 9 introduces the 200 million horsemen, and then chapter 11 tells us who they are. So the four angels bound at the river Euphrates, they're not fallen angels. Everybody says they're demons and fallen angels. No, they're not. They release the 200 million horsemen that are, that are God's army. So what it says they've been prepared for this day and hour. These are the four angels that are in charge of God's army. They're not bad guys. I'm probably named after one of the guys, one of the angels. And, and so they're, they're not the bad guys, and they release these people. And so why does it say the Euphrates River? Euphrates River represents Babylon. So what do we know about that? Revelation 18.4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not participate in her sins and receive of her plagues. The 200 million horsemen are the ones that come out of her. They're God's people that come out of the harlot. And then they do not receive of her plagues. And, and what are the 2 million horsemen? It says the plagues of the fire and the brimstone that comes out of their mouths. It kills a third of the harlot's people. So come out of the harlot. My second book is called uh, The Harlot of Babylon. Come out of my people. And, and again, my blog has details on all this stuff. So let's talk about the end of the second woe now. All this is, is still the second woe. The la it lasts three and a half years. So, uh, and it's the Great Tribulation. The first half of Daniel's 70th week are the birth pains leading up to, that's the first five angels are in the first half of Daniel's 70th week, and then uh, the 6th and 7th are the end. So, so let's look at Rev 11, 7. Uh, when they have finished their testimony, this is the two witnesses, the beast that comes up out of the abyss will make war with them and overcome them and kill them. So at the end of the three and a half year tribulation, uh, the worshipers are all killed. They've completed their ministry, their three and a half year ministry, and then it's the same pattern as Jesus. His ministry is always the foreshadowing pattern of the two witnesses' ministry. And at, just like Jesus was killed, he laid down his life at the end of his ministry. The two witnesses are, when they're done with their testimony, not until they're done with their testimony, when they have completed their ministry, uh, the beast that comes up out of the abyss will overpower them and kill them, and their bodies lay in the street of the great city for three and a half days. Of course, the great city is the harlot of Babylon. It says it seven times in the book of Revelation. Forget about the great city being Jerusalem unless you want to curse Jerusalem. You don't want to do that either. So uh, it's all the cities of the nations. So this is global. The harlot is global. It's uh, And the overcomers have been tormenting the harlot's people for three and a half years, killing a third of them, three plus billion people. And, and now they're dead and their bodies lay in the streets of the great city. So 
and Rev 11.10, and those who dwell on the earth will rejoice over them and celebrate and send gifts to one another because these two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. So the worshipers, the overcomer company of worshipers, torment the evil people of the whole earth for three and a half years. And this is the second woe. When they are finally dead, the whole world celebrates, but it's short-lived. And so uh, Rev 11, 11. But after the three and a half days, the breath of life from God came into them, and they stood on their feet. And, and I, this is going to be some event, I tell you. They stand up on their feet, and great fear fell upon those who were watching them. No kidding. And they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, come up here. And they went up into heaven in the cloud, and their enemies watched them. So at the end of the sixth trumpet, the second woe, the two witness company of worshipers are raised from the dead. And this ends the second woe. This ends the three and a half years. They testify for three and a half years, they're killed, and then they're raised from the dead. And so that ends the three and a half year, second half of Daniel's 70th week. So the second woe lasts three, uh, the full three and a half years. The second woe lasts, it is the tribulation. And, uh, and so at the end of the discussion of the two witnesses there in chapter 11, John tells us that the second woe is now over. So it, it starts with the 200 million horsemen being released, the, and the overcomers are the 200 million horsemen, and it lasts the full three and a half years. And so Rev 11, 14, the second woe is past. Behold, the third woe is coming quickly. So the seventh trumpet is the third woe. We just finished the sixth trumpet, the sixth angel. Now the third woe. This is very straightforward sequence of events. They don't overlap because it says one ends and now the next one starts. And uh, check out my timeline uh, on my blog or on my video and uh, see how this timeline works. Okay? So the seventh and last trumpet is the third woe. It follows immediately after the second and it and that takes place during the 75 days that are tacked on to the end of the Daniel 70th week back in Daniel. So uh, the seventh woe is after the rapture, after at the end of the 70th week. Okay. 11:15, Rev 11:15. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, "The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and His Christ, and He will reign forever and ever." So the seventh trumpet signals the beginning of the messianic kingdom. The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah. This is the fulfillment of the Lord's prayer when he says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The seventh trumpet starts that kingdom. And it says there's loud voices in heaven. And, uh, and that's because all the Christians have, have been raptured up, the final catching up into the heavenly realm. And uh, that takes place at the seventh trumpet, at the very end of the tribulation, and just before the seven bowls of wrath. And so uh, the seventh trumpet is the last of the seven trumpets, and it's of the seventh seal. And it's what Paul is referring to when he talks about the rapture. So let's do 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Everybody's heard this a million times. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. So there's seven trumpets of the seventh seal. And this is the only place in the prophecies where there is more than one trumpet, or a sequence of trumpets. So the rapture takes place, Paul says, at the last trumpet. So which one is the last trumpet? Well, there's seven trumpets. I'm not very sharp, but I'm sharp enough to figure this out. The rapture takes place at the seventh trumpet of the seventh seal, at the very end of the tribulation. This verse alone should put the rest, all the pre-tribbers and the pre-wrath, uh, all those myths that are out there that are misleading so many people today. As Jesus said in Matthew 24, they will miss, the false teachers will mislead many, not a few, and so I'm one of the few that speak out against uh, these uh, myths, as I call them, fairy tales, pre-trib and pre-wrath. Um, 
uh, and I'm persecuted constantly. I'm rejected constantly. I'm kicked out of Bible studies, kicked out of churches. Uh, I can't even advertise my books because uh, none of the uh, Christian ministries will advertise my books because they're not pre-trib. Or, yeah. So, um, because I don't believe in a pre-trib rapture, I'm uh, persecuted and rejected. But I, I'm in good company, so it doesn't. It used to bother me. Now it doesn't bother me. And uh, so, then again, First um, Thessalonians four sixteen, when the Lord, when Paul's talking about the rapture, for the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. So here, here, first in First Corinthians, he said the last trumpet, and then here he says the trumpet of God, and then in Matthew twenty four, Jesus talking about the rapture, he says immediately after the tribulation of those days. Uh, I don't know how how you can make any more clear than that. Um, he will send forth his angels with a great trumpet. And so all, all these verses are talking about that same trumpet, the last trumpet, the seventh trumpet of the seventh seal, which is happens at the very end of the tribulation. So uh, all these verses are talking about the same event. Amen? Oh, oh, by the way, uh, not all the ministries reject uh, advertising my books. World Net Daily advertise, advertises my books. And uh, Charisma Magazine, good for them. They advertise my books, and and so. Uh, but most most of the others, I, I'll send them the information. And you know, I have my credit card ready for these advertisers. You know, that's what they do for a living. They got to make the money, right, for their ministries. And they they go, no, we're not going to advertise that. And so, and so anyway, I had the Lord told me to mention a World Net Daily and Charisma Magazine uh, do advertise my stuff. So. God bless them. Amen. Okay, so uh, the seventh trumpet, the seven or the seven bowls of wrath is the main event of the third wall. And the church is gone at this point. This is after the rapture, at the end, at, after Daniel's 70th week. And this these things take place pretty quick. And basically, it's the destruction of the beast kingdom, the destruction of the harlot of Babylon, and Satan cast into the pit for a thousand years. And so that's the third woe, and that's all directed, once again, these woes are all directed toward the ungodly, not the godly. And so uh, for more information on this, remember, uh, check out my blog, and uh, like I have uh, more info on Joel's army, the two last eight churches, Philly and Leo, and, and a whole bunch of stuff on the two witnesses, the two anointed ones, Zechariah uh, 4, and et cetera. And then don't forget my two books are on Amazon.com, The Two Witnesses and The Harlot of Babylon. Uh, check them out. And a lot of the information in those are, are also on my blog. Uh, and my blog is free. So you can read it there if you want and buy a book and give it to somebody. So uh, I, I think next my next little video might be on Joel. We'll see how it goes, okay? So, Lord, I pray once again that we would all merit to be overcomers, that we would all go through the veil into the sanctuary and be the worshipers in the last days who are anointed and, and blessed and protected during the last days, and that we would be in that army, your army, that testifies to the truth for the three and a half years. Thank you, Jesus. Baruch Hashem. Shalom.